you look at the B-24, it was built to wage war. It was designed to take as much bomb load to the enemy that it could as fast as it could. The B-24 Liberator was designed by Consolidated. It was a four-engine bomber. It had Pratt & Whitney engines, and it utilizes a Davis wing, which is a revolutionary airfoil that gave the B-24 better flight characteristics for drag and lift. The B-24 had two bomb bays, a forward and an aft bomb bay. Each bomb bay had a catwalk that ran down the center of it, which would allow people from the front of the plane to get to the back of the plane while in flight. The doors were a flexible door that was able to roll up the outside of the plane, and then the plane could drop its bombs on the target. Those bombs ranged as small as 100 pounds up to 1,000 pounds. If you look at a B-24, the guns, the turrets, are positioned to provide the maximum protection from enemy fighters. So you have guns facing forward, you have guns facing up, down, left, right, and back. It's all about protecting the bombers individually and then also as a formation from enemy fighter attack. All these planes had rather interesting nose arts. Some of them you know, were reminiscent of home. A lot of them had pinup girls on it. The 93rd Bomb Group 330th Squadron would paint shark mouse on the front of the plane. It was just a connection back to home or something to fight for. The planes early in the war had really no obvious identification on the tail. And then as the war went on, they started painting the tails over with a wing color, which in the event of the 93rd was yellow, with the large black stripe right down through the tail. They built more B-24s than any other plane in the United States during the Second World War. They were making so many B-24s, Consolidated couldn't keep up with production, so they had other factories making them. You could have a B-24 designed by Consolidated, built by Ford, with Pratt & Whitney engines that were built by Buick. You had all these companies that in the civilian life would have been rivals. General Motors and Ford would have never joint ventured like that. And here they're working together, building engines and switching stuff around, all in the name of the war effort to win the war. Mm -hmm.